Uh, so I was thinking about this yesterday. My, my daughter plays softball, and I was at softball practice last night. One of the dads said to me, it's kind of like, what do you think of Hurts? And we talked a lot about Jalen Hurts yesterday. Uh, I, I, I seem to focus on the end of the game and that poor throw, I think, more than the average Eagle fan out there. It was, it was a lot of Sirianni vitriol, a lot of that madness about the play calling or going for it on fourth, that throwing it on third down or not kicking the field goal or whatever, which by the way, should be out there as well. Uh, but so I thought about it. I'm like, all right, like I'm a, I'm a Jalen hurts fan. I am. I'm a Jalen hurts fan. I, I think he's a, he think he's a good player, but how good is he? And has he regressed somewhat since 2022? And I think the easy answer that on that is yes. Even though if you go through 11 games last year, he was playing at an MVP type clip and we're only through two games this year and he's been good, but it just seemed like something happened last year in that San Francisco game. And I remember, uh, I remember Bosa came out after the game and said, Oh, well that's the template right there for, for beating Jalen hurts is you pressure him up the middle. You don't let him, you don't let him run the ball up the middle uh, in passing situations where he scrambles and you more or less force him out to the right. And he will stop looking downfield and he'll be worried and he'll be paying attention to the rush. And then he started getting blitzed. And that's when it was Dunsky. They had, they, they, they couldn't, they couldn't react. They couldn't adjust to that last year. Uh, they were much better against the blitz in week one. Rand Duffy's going to join us coming up at 825. He'll let us know how he's doing against the blitz and how he looked in game two. I don't think Jalen Hurts was bad in week one or week two, but was he great? And that's really what we're looking for out of our quarterback is when in 2022, he makes just like such a, such a great adjustment. If you remember going in, going into the year 2022, a lot of people had the questions of, can he really be a top quarterback? Not just a dynamic weapon, not a guy that can, that can throw the ball, but also you know, really relies on his legs. Can he develop as a passer? And by the end of the season in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, Man, did he develop as a passer. He was really, really good. He outplayed Pat Mahomes. They should have won that Super Bowl. And if it wasn't for a phantom play call um, or a phantom uh, penalty, Eagles probably win that Super Bowl. But so fast forward to where we are right now. And I look at Jalen Hurts and I'm like, all right, what, what kind of a player are we talking about? And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about a he's trash or he's not good or whatever. He's easily a top 12, top 10 quarterback. But now that we enter this season and the league has obviously made an adjustment, not only to Jalen, but to what this offense is going to try to do, even with a new offensive coordinator, you wonder if he has regressed as a passer to all the strides that he made in 2022, if they've kind of been washed away. Now, let me just, just stay with me here for a second. When you look at, in week two, when you look against the loss with the Falcons, they had two touchdown drives. On those touchdown drives, Jalen Hurts, his biggest attribute was his legs, was rushing. So let's do the first touchdown drive. He had 47 rushing yards, and you'll remember it. It's where he split the defenders, you saw that burst, and it's like, wow, that's the old Jalen Hurts. And a lot of people were excited it was a great play. They scored a touchdown, but it was like, oh, Jalen's back. He couldn't do that last year. Yes, that's the Jalen we want to see. Second touchdown drive, he had five rushes. And that's five, or was it, that's five rushes for 33 yards. And that's not a 20-play drive, right? So you're talking about the quarterback running the ball five times. And these aren't designed runs, most of them. Some of them are. But a lot of these are scrambles. And when you go back and just go back and think about, especially in the second half, what Jalen was doing, it seemed like every play rolling right, rolling right, rolling right, leaving the pocket, rolling right. The development of Jalen Hurts as a quarterback, as a passer, feels like it's stalled. Because when you watch these games, and again, this is the, the game against Atlanta, if he's not running for these yards, if he's not a part of the running game, mostly scrambling, I don't think they score touchdowns there. And I'm not going to criticize Jalen Hurts because you're trying to win the game. And if the offense isn't the offense isn't moving on third downs, on fourth downs, when you you're you have a second and 20, there was one play. You had a second and long, and he got a, a nice big chunk of yards back. I get it. 
The goal needs to be long-term that Jalen Hurts can throw the ball as a quarterback. Because every time that he needs to do this to move the ball, I don't know if he's missing opportunities down the field. I don't know if he's not seeing the field very well. Um, this was the, the and and this was on on the on the drive that he had 47 rushing yards. Fourth and three, Jalen Hurts 23 yards. Second and 20, Jalen Hurts nine yards. Third and 11, Jalen Hurts 15 yards. So again, big spots. I'm never going to tell my quarterback, hey. You don't want to make a play there because you're going to make a play there. But I need to, I need him to be able to do that with his arm. And here's why we saw last year, the last half of last year, there was something going on with, with him being injured. He couldn't do those things. He couldn't, he couldn't outrun defenders. He didn't look healthy. That's why Monday night was like, wow, he looks healthy. He looks like he has a burst again. Right? So what's going to happen when he runs the ball a lot, he's going to take a beating. He's going to have wear and tear. He's going to get injured. It's not a matter of if it's when, because it's happened every year that he's been in the league. So if you're going to rely on Jalen Hurts to run the ball, to move your offense, you're in big trouble. You might win 10 games. You might win an NFC East. You're not winning a Super Bowl unless you get back to throwing the football. The development feels like it's stopped with Jalen Hurts as a passer. And here, here's the other thing. As he gets a little bit older and he's still young, when he hits upper 20s, is he going to be able to have that burst? He's not going to have that burst. So again, relying on Jalen Hurts, the runner as a quarterback is dangerous. Because, oh yeah, you can have success short term. But what happens when you play the good teams, the better defensive coordinators, the better playmakers on defense? It's tough to win like that, especially in the playoffs. And I, I, I've just seen a little bit of a regression from Jalen as a passer. So we'll talk to Fran coming up here at, uh, at 825. He's looked at the film. Really, with Fran, WTF is going on with the, def with the defensive line, pressures with, uh, with trying to stop the run. Huff is like, it's like he's barely even out there. You can't put him in there on running downs. You can't. I watched some, some Twitter guy out there did some, did some, some uh, film study and put the, and put the, the videos up there, and it's like, wow, he is getting manhandled. So we'll talk to Fran coming up at uh, 825. Uh, Phillies win last night. We'll get the latest from Tyler. But uh, before we do that, Tyler, your thoughts on Jalen Hurts as far as a regression and how he's played so far this season. So I, I think that there's merit to say the, the quarterback that Jalen Hurts was in 2022, he has not, he has not reached that, that pinnacle uh, over the last you know probably seven games. Because he was good in the, the beginning of the, the, the first portion of, of last year. Um, they were winning a lot of close games. We, we kind of saw the cracks in the foundation. Um, but he was pretty good. Uh, and they were, he, I, I, like you said, he was kind of in an MVP candidacy race, you know, maybe through the first, what would you say, first 11 eight, games, nine, he was the, 10 weeks? 11, I think it was 11 weeks he was the MVP. So I think it's, safe to, it's safe to say that the, the level at which that you want Jalen Hurts to reach, which was 2022 Jalen Hurts, he has not gotten back to since the end of that season. The best game I ever saw Jalen Hurts play was the Super Bowl. It's the best game I ever seen him play. Um, he outdueled uh, Patrick Mahomes, who just happened to have the football last in yep. that moment, right? And to you know, that's one of those situations where I tip my cap to a quarterback who lost the game. He was so darn good. He might have been the best player on the field that day. He was. Um, to, I agree. To, to get back to that pinnacle, he hasn't done that yet. Um, yesterday's, or excuse me, Monday's game specifically, we talked about this a lot yesterday. Uh, Jalen Hurts has some blame in this game. There's no doubt about it. Uh, however, to me, the overarching issue was uh, your defense forced zero three and outs. Not a single three and out all game. Uh, the Falcons punted twice the entirety <laughs> of the game. Um, for a team that scored 22 points and needed a last-minute touchdown to get to the 22-point threshold, you would think both of those numbers would be much higher. Right. Because if you said to me, bl point blank, Falcons scored 22 points, Against the Eagles, I would tell you the Eagles win that game nine out of ten times, right? They're scoring 27, 28, 30, something like that. This offense is meant to score like that. Uh, so Jalen Hurts is not blameless uh, in this game or in the decision-making that he had in game one that, you know, could have, in, in theory, cost them game one as well. Uh, he's not blameless. But to me, he's number, I don't know, maybe four or five in the blame game this week. 
uh, because the defense is number one. Your defensive coordinator is up there. Decision-making by the head coach at times was up there. There's a lot of steps for me to get to uh, to get to Jalen Hurts in a blame game this week. Uh, fair enough. I, I don't... <laughs> I don't disagree. Saquon also, if he catches that ball, we're not talking about it. We're probably not talking about this right now. And people are telling us it's fine. Like relax. Everything's fine. But we did last year. Everything's fine. They're winning these close games. Don't worry about it. They're, they're finding out ways to win. But Jalen also, I remember that bills game last year where he was going back and forth with, with Josh Allen and he was not going to lose that game. He was amazing. So we have seen him play amazing uh, last year, but it's so hard. It's so hard to win in the NFL. These defensive coordinators literally spend all offseason and all week trying to figure you out. And sometimes when when you're figured out, it's hard to get back to where you were. And maybe the ceiling with him has already been has already been there with the with the Super Bowl year. All right, but if, but, it, but if the ceiling is the Super Bowl year, that's a darn good quarterback. Yeah, but can he get back there? That's a fair question. Can he? Because, like, I guess what I'm saying is that you're, you're. He's never going to get better than that. Which is, you don't need him to get better than that. He was. I'm not sure there is much better. Right. He would have been the Super Bowl MVP. But can he get back to that level? And we saw it at times. But the reliance on the reliance on the run, I hate. And it, it's necessary. I get it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be on fourth down. You shouldn't be doing it. But I need to see more out of Jalen Hurts, the quarterback, throwing the football.